You might have heard that the average adult eats one credit card of plastic every week. And you might have heard this from sources as reliable as Stanford. That's because this comes from an article in a peer-reviewed journal, the Journal of Hazardous Materials, and that journal article found that we eat between 0.1 and 5 grams per week as a global average for adults. On average, a plastic credit card weighs 5 grams, ergo, we eat one credit card per week at the upper edge of the average. But it turns out that study was quite bunk. A year later, that very same journal published another article explaining the bad methodology of the first article. Most notably, that first article combined multiple data sets that it really shouldn't have. While I'm not going to go through every bad combination, the one that stood out to me most sharply was that in figuring out the mass of microplastics that we're eating, it combined two data sets. One data set counted the number of particles being consumed by humans, and it was looking at particles as small as one micrometer in radius or edge length, and then it used that in combination with a data set that tried to figure out the average mass of particles that we're consuming, but that data set only considered particles that were bigger than one millimeter, or a thousand times bigger than the first data set. So it's not reasonable to combine both of these data sets, and the 0.1 to 5 grams per week really isn't accurate. That second article cites to a, another article, a third article shown here, and in that article they more reliably calculate how much microplastic adult humans are eating per week, and it finds that we're eating 4.1 micrograms per week. That means that we will eat one credit card every 1,219,512.2 weeks, or about 23,000 years. So, a lot of the conversation about microplastic dramatically overestimates how much we're eating. Even if we eat millions of these particles, they are so incredibly small that we're not eating credit cards worth of plastic. But nonetheless, we have good, reliable scientific investigations that have detected microplastic in our tissues, from our brains to our testicles. And there's a famous saying in toxicology, the dose makes the poison. So it's entirely possible that even though we're not eating full credit cards worth of microplastic, microplastic is still toxic for us. So looking to more data, what is the toxic quantity of microplastics? How little microplastics should we be eating? From my read of the academic literature, I would say that there's really two things that articles say again and again and again. First, they say, maybe it's dangerous. Littered throughout articles that are cautioning against the dangers of microplastic, every time they actually make a strong claim, they qualify it with words like could be, possibly, suspected. Over and over, what we see in these articles is that they're not sure how dangerous microplastics are, and their ultimate conclusion is often that little is known about the negative health effects of microplastics. And then that sort of leads into the second thing that a lot of these articles say, which is that more research is needed. In 2019, the EU sanctioned a report, and that report concluded that there's no current danger. A 2019 World Health Organization report also said that there was no current danger. In 2022, that 2019 WHO report was updated, and that report said that there was no evidence of a risk to human health. So it seems like microplastics are going the way of cholesterol. It seemed like it was bad to consume, but the more we look into it, the more we're not finding the negative health impacts that we expected. But none of those articles conclude that we should stop researching. All of those articles say we don't have enough evidence now, we're not seeing strong evidence of negative health outcomes, but we should keep looking because we're at really early stage of the scientific research. So it is still entirely possible that microplastics will go the way of asbestos, a thing that we thought was fairly safe and we used in our everyday life that we realized was a significant toxin and we had to get rid of. Nonetheless, we don't know that it's asbestos now, 
And so we probably shouldn't be taking extreme measures to avoid microplastics. My wife and I recently got a new babysitter, and while my wife was walking around telling her how we do things, the babysitter asked if we microwave our milk bottles, and my wife said yes. But then she kind of paused and thought about it and said that she wasn't sure why that was our stance. She couldn't remember our reasoning, which is part of why I've made this video. Many friends of ours are worried about microplastics, particularly in their milk bottles, because there is research that says putting warm milk in a plastic bottle and then shaking it releases a lot of microplastic. But as I've already said, a lot of microplastic is really not that much plastic, and we don't currently know that that has significant negative health outcomes. So I'm not very worried about it. Nonetheless, I'm willing to take the lowest cost remedy available to me, and so I've started gently prodding my toddler into trying to take her bottle cold. She's old enough that she could do that, it's just not her preference. But when she says no, the expected benefit I'm looking for from getting her to stop taking a warm milk bottle is not even worth her tantruming. So it's not something I've put my foot down, it's not something I'm willing to take even mildly costly measures against. But in six months, this could change. It could be that a groundbreaking new study comes out. It could be that in five years, my opinion, which is reasonable today, is outlandishly stupid then. That's just the reality of cutting-edge science. Our understanding of facts change constantly. One of my favorite books of all time that usually lives on my stack of important books up there is The Half-Life of Facts. This book is all about how information changes, or at least our understanding of information changes, and how important it is to revise your knowledge every couple of years. I'm not very worried about microplastics today, but I will keep checking in case things change. I think there's a real pressure to never be wrong, to never acknowledge that we have gaps in our knowledge. And this is really unscientific. To be a good scientist is to be reasonably skeptical about all the knowledge that you possess and reassess periodically. And those are my thoughts on microplastics. And if you disagree and you think you are, we should be really worried about them, then please tell me why below. But ultimately, if you want to be an extra cautious person and you want to take the steps to avoid microplastics, you feel free. I've been Buck Kansas. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.